Okay, we'll now have the opening hymn by Elder Thompson. That's three, that's five, one, eight. Five, one, eight. Standing on the promises of Christ. Church, 
The scripture reading comes to us from Daniel 5, verses 5. Please stand when you have found it. Here beginneth. Immediately the fingers of human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace opposite the lampstand, the lampstand, sorry. And the king saw the hand as it wrote. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Amen. You may be seated. You know, God has done a lot for us. Is that so? Well, he has done a lot for me. And tonight, we have uh, numerous testimonies. We'll have Brother Garfield, who will give us his. Come on, Brother Garfield. Let's say amen, brethren. God is good, and all the time, oh, I have so much testimony, what I want to share with the brothers tonight, but this one I have to share with you guys, what God has bring me through, trust me, words cannot explain, right now I'm standing here, I'm so nervous, <laughs> really. But about, about five months ago, before I get baptized, I was going through a dark, dark place. And I called Anzai. And I said, Anzai, I am going through so much things cannot explain. And I want to get baptized. And he said, you sure? And I said, yes, Anzai, I want to get baptized. And same time, Anzai called the pastor. When he called the pastor, <laughs> and the pastor meet with me. And I said, I want to get baptized. And he said, you sure? And I said, I sure, I want to give God my life. But I want to give God my life, but I don't know God, as in, a lot of people talk about God, but they don't have a relationship with God. So in that time, I was praying a lot. I was praying I don't come off my knee, none at all. And I remember, I believe it's Romans 8, 30-something. 30, 30 Once God is with you, there's nothing can come against you. And while I was praying one, one night, I was afraid of all myself, like afraid afraid till um, I feel like I want to go crazy sleepless night sleepless night I get up like 1 o'clock can't go back to sleep as I hear something I will look in two sides me see I'm a shudder I'm afraid I'm a shudder no joke and I never stopped praying and as I never left my side and she pray with me I would call pastor and pastor pray with me and in that time, same way, I was still lost. Until one night, I came in. And I started to pray. Just kneeling on my knees. I didn't even shut my eyes for a second. And while I kneeled on, I feel a arms rest upon my shoulder. I remember in the brothers and sisters. I am so afraid, you know. And imagine you kneeling in your house, you're alone, and feel a harm rest upon your shoulder. And I go back to the scriptures. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And I can share this with you, brothers and sisters. No matter what you're going through, just always remember this. God is with you. No matter what you're going through, just keep praying, keep fighting, keep holding on, and try to have a relationship with God. I'm time I, I said to myself, how oh, so much things go on in the, in the holy days, in the Bible, so much people doing miracles, 
and I don't see nothing happening now in the church. So this is a different testimony I'm giving you now. And I went to my island church and everybody was focus, focusing on doing other things. And a church brother come in, the, come in the church and he was literally, they'd have to bring him in. When they bring him in, he was dropping down, throwing up, doing all type of thing. I was saying that nobody is even looking at him. And the Holy Spirit come to me and said, just pray for him. And I start to pray for him. And when I pray, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I pray for that person, and he walked out stronger than before, you couldn't even believe it. And I can give so much testimony. I went to Toa's church, just the same. And a sister was there sick on his way to the um, hospital. And my sister said to me, um, the Spirit said you to pray for him. And when I start to pray for that person, believe me, brothers and sisters, you couldn't believe it's that person was on his way to the hospital. So I'm saying, God is good. And keep holding on, and hold on, and hold on, and never let go. Amen. Praise be to God. And it's a joy seeing Brother Garfield tonight not walking with the walking stick. It's great joy. Yes, God is good. Keep holding on, my brother. Okay, we'll now have the introduction of the speaker by Brother Valentine. Bless the Lord, church. Let's praise the Lord. God is good. All the time, God is truly good indeed. As Sister Pearson said, she was hoping to hear the testimony of Brother Garfield um, from, from the accident, I believe. That's the one you're talking about. It is truly my brother. Good indeed to see you walking without a walking stick tonight. God is good. Let us give God a, 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 a clap for that. Yes, let us give him a clap for that. As I remember the last time I saw you, you have a stick walking with. God is good, my brother. It is truly indeed a privilege tonight to introduce to you our speaker for the night, Conroy Shakes. He is a dedicated individual with a strong background in education and ministry. He overcame his health challenges in his younger youth and per and pursued education at the Vancefield Primary School and Malden Comprehensive High School. Conroy, trans Conroy transitioned from the, the hotel industry to academia earning and uh, earning a bachelor and bachelor of arts in religion and uh, theology from Northern Caribbean University with a, mi with a minor in Spanish. Hola. He has extensive teaching experience in uh, Bible knowledge and uh, is certified in education and training, workforce and training as well, and uh, human resource management. Since November 2009, Conroy has served as the district pastor of Bamboo District of Churches, demonstrating demonstrating leadership and dedication alongside his partner in ministry, Shauna Shakes. We don't know further ado tonight. I live with you. Conroy Shakes, and he's going to bless our soul tonight. But before that, we'll have our dear sister Dacia with a song of meditation. Good evening, everyone. There's no one great amongst us. When Just come. 
and amen. Good evening, exchange brethren. I'm not convinced at all. Let me say it again. Good evening, exchange brethren. Uh, still not convinced because uh, the amount of us inside here, we can do much better. Good evening, exchange brethren. All right, now you sound like you're awake. It's good to be here with you tonight to share with you a word. I want to uh, say thanks to Brother Valentine for the invitation and also for the introduction. Uh, when he asked me to be the speaker for tonight, I contemplated a while. And why? Because some of us pastors only get Mondays as our day off. But when it comes on to the work of the Lord, there is no day off for us. No day off. Amen, somebody. <laughs> so we just have to be working. And so, without hesitation after that, I said to him, once it's in the evening, I'll make myself available. Because I had prayer engagements in the morning. And so I was happy when he said it's in the evening. And so I journeyed all the way from Montego Bay to be with you tonight. Uh, indeed, God is good, yes? And as I listened to the testimony of my brother, I was there just nodding my head because on my way up, I would have counted at least three accidents that I could have been in. But God, oh, you didn't get that. You say, but God, uh, when the enemy set out to kill us and God intervened, he removed all the traps of the enemy. Uh, you know, he cramped and paralyzed the plans of the enemy because his children must testify of his goodness. And so, my brother, uh, the Lord has laid his hand on you. And I want to let you know tonight that he didn't just lay his hands on you for you to get baptized. He lays his hands on you so that you will go forth and share his goodness his grace and his mercies with every man, woman, boy, and girl. He has called you to do a work for him. I, I think I heard somebody said uh, they are happy to see that you are not walking with a walking stick because God intervened. What a God. The great physician would have intervened. And with such testimony... And such reminder for my sister, when he was on the cross, we all were on his mind. We could just pray and go home. But since I travel so far, let me share a word with you. Amen, somebody? Amen. Tonight I want to share with you the, under the caption, the unexpected visitor. The unexpected visitor. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed as we pray, divine God and our Father. Thank you so much for this opportunity wherein we can hear a word from you. O oh Lord, I declare like Isaiah, woe is me, for I am undone. I ask now, Lord, that you will take the life call from the altar, place on my lips and purge me. Then use me, O oh God, to speak to your, your people. May at the end your name be glorified and our hearts be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we would have looked at the theme for week of prayer, showing up in the city. Am I right? And in this passage, we will identify how God showed up in our city. The unexpected visitor. Sometimes you are at home preparing for some special occasions. And somebody just show up. Uh, you didn't expect them to come, but they just show up at a time uh, not so much convenient, but you can't turn them away. You just have to allow them to say what they have to say or do what they have to do and then move. Sometimes, for those of us who work, you're in the office and you're taking a little medica um, meditation when somebody just knock on your door or just push the door open and comes in and you must entertain that individual. Sometimes you're on the road 
and something just happened you didn't expect it to happen somebody just approached you you didn't expect them to approach you those are called unexpected visitors it's, it's true that sometimes you are not prepared for an unexpected visitor you would rather them notify you so you can be prepared right brother valentine uh, I have the, the habit as a pastor. I, I think uh, some, somebody told me that pastor is not the best. But let me share it with you. When I'm visiting my members, I don't necessarily notify them. Wow. All right. And you might be wondering why you don't notify the members, pastor? If I'm going to look for Brother Valentine and I notify him, the reality is I will not be able to see him in his natural element. He knows that pastor is coming. He's going to make his place and everything ready to meet pastor. So when pastor gets there, everything seems fine and nice. But the truth is, after pastor left, it returns to the normal. How will pastor be able to address the need that exists if you prepare everything nice and wonderful? I went to visit a, a family, and when I got there, an elder was with me. And when I got there, Brother Valentine, I could see that the family was going through turmoil. I didn't tell them I was coming, so I was their unexpected visitor. And I said to the elder, I said, Elder, all I can do at this moment is to pray with this family and then see how best I can satisfy the physical need. Elder said, Pastor, what are you talking about? I said, uh, you did not see what I saw. When I looked at the family, I recognized that telling them the word of God would not have been effective. There would be nothing much that they would have gotten from it because what was happening to them, they were, they were, they were anticipating something be done to that um, situation and then share a word with them so i prayed i went to the car and i said to my elder i said elder i want you to give this to the family and when she did one member of the family said how did you know we were in need just by looking at the faces I knew something was wrong. And so, as soon as that need was satisfied, I prayed with them. And I said, I will return another time. Hello? You've got to be wise. You want to share the word of God, but there's a physical need. Deal with that one. They did not expect me. I was their unexpected visitor. The truth is, I would have shared, I'm coming to the word, I'm coming to, to Daniel chapter 5, but I want to share a little more with you. Uh, my mother told me, because I didn't know much about that, <laughs> uh, that for a number of years, I couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. Doctor said I would never walk, but Jesus said not so. Hello, somebody. <laughs> But one night, my mother saw an unexpected visitor. And when the unexpected visitor came and entered the room, uh, hello, we don't believe in Doppy. So if anybody in exchange believes in Doppy, we don't believe in Doppy. We believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. And so she said when the unexpected visitor came, she fled the scene. She could not stay in the presence of the visitor. 
But then guess what? She ran away, leave me. <laughs> and the truth is sometimes for God to work, he has to allow some people to run away. Amen, somebody? The next morning she said she returned. And when she returned, the child doctor said would never walk again came running to her. And the unexpected visitors, some of them when they come, they come with some great blessing and peace. So let's check what the Bible has to say about this unexpected visitor. Belshazzar, the Bible said in verse 1, the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lord and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. To me, that suggests that they were having a party. And the party just got in full swing. And the leader of the party, who is Belshazzar, decided that he wanted his lords to be there. He cannot drink his wine without having his lords. And he was having a good time, I assume. You know, sometimes we'll pass some parties and you wonder, how can people leave their, the comfort of their beds and spend the sleepless night reveling all night, having a party? <laughs> I was speaking with a group of young people some time ago, and I said to them, you know, it would be good if you give your life to Jesus. And, and one, one of them said to me, Pastor, I can't give my life to the Lord. I have not yet lived. So I said, hold on. How old are you? 15 years old. So what have you been doing from age one? A matter from you were born, what have you been doing? I said, Pastor, that's not what I'm talking about. I need to enjoy the world. I need to have fun. So I said, okay, let me break that down for you. Uh, I'm sure you don't understand what you're talking about, so let me break it down for you. Now, the only thing in the world you can enjoy is a party. And you can always um, challenge me on that. There is nothing else out there for anybody to enjoy. And I'm going to show you how you don't even enjoy a party. So I said to the group of young people, when you go to a party, what fun do you have? Because when you return, you return worse than you went. Am I right? Wow. So you would have left home well energetic, but when you return, you are tired. You would have left home sober, but when you return, you are drunken. You would have left home with some funds in your pocket, but when you return, it's empty. Wow. Hmm. Then I said to them, if after all of this you consider it living life, you are really wasting life. Because that's what you're actually doing. You're wasting everything that the Lord would have blessed you with. So you go to a party with, uh, and some persons go to parties and spend $100,000. When, when I heard, I was shocked by that Valentine. $100,000. And one bottle of, is NSA, they call it? Hello? And not only that, they would have spent at least $50,000 to get the suit and the shoe for the party. Hello? That's $150,000. Wow. So maybe by the time they finish spending for the party, it's possible $250,000 or more. Yet they are living life. And all of that gone down the drain. Because when you return from the party, you don't even remember what transpired at the party. And some persons may have gone to the party and got robbed there. But Belshazzar had a party, a great feast, the Bible said, and a thousand of his lords came and they drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command 
to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem that the king and his lords his wives and his concubines may drink from them oh look at this outer other business now they were having their drink from regular cups i don't know about those little cups that we use um, at church we serve drink those little plastic cups um the possibility exists that those were the kind of cups that they were using or maybe something similar to that because it's way down in history maybe these plastic cups were not yet manufactured mm. but they had their own but Belshazzar decided that he must take that which belongs to God and use it for his party you know some of us take God's temple and take it to these parties and mess it up believing we are doing a good thing and we are having fun but the truth is we are messing with that which belongs to God and because God didn't show up when you use the temple you think that everything is fine hello you think God didn't show up now these vessels are sacred vessels these were to be used in god's house but this out of order king decided that he must use these vessels because he wanted to show who is god hmm? hello he wanted to tell god that listen god i am god because i established babylon and i am in charge of it therefore whatever i command it must be done he commanded and they brought them to him anybody here has a special cup at home nobody drinks from that cup hello put your hand up man you have a special cup at home yes and nobody drink from that cup not true when they see that cup they know it's yours not true my sister and they don't touch it and if they make the mistake and touch it a trouble not true <laughs> look at that and somebody may have a special fork that they use or a special plate that they use mm -hmm. and nobody can touch it like we have special things that we use God also has special things that he used. Amen, somebody? Watch this now. Then they brought the gold vessels. And, and the thing is, Nebuchadnezzar didn't just drink from them himself, you know. He gave to his wives to drink. And all his side chicks to drink from them too. And the thousands of lords that he invited, he gave them God's holy cups. To use can you imagine how rude this man has been and then they brought the golden vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God which had been in Jerusalem and the king and his lords his wives and his concubines drank from them verse 4 they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver bronze and iron wood and stone so not only did they went and use the the vessels belong to the lord but they also said to the lord we are going to take what belongs to you and serve our god we are going to praise our god we are going to show you that we have gods and you cannot match them that's something when you're gone in a god face Have you ever seen in some of the communities and areas that we live, some people operate as though they are invincible. They are untouchable. You can't speak to them. They, they do as they please. And nobody says anything. You have to be quiet. Watch this. In the same hour. So while the king was having fun, 
His wives and concubines were having fun. The thousands of lords, they were having fun. I believe by now, they were so intoxicated that they didn't know themselves. The Bible said, give strong drink to those who are ready to perish. And wine to those of a heavy heart, that they may forget their misery. So while they were having fun, the unexpected visitor showed up. God showed up in the city. And God let them know that he is God and God alone. Preadventure they may have missed the commandment that says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He said, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers and mothers upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. When God intervened, God showed up to do one of two things. Vindicate himself or to let man know the time of the day. Because watch what the Bible says. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand... <laughs> My brother was giving his testimony. He said he was alone. Am I right? And what he felt? A hand on his neck. And he was, must be wondering whose hand it was. I told you it, it was the hand of God. Nebuchadnezzar did not know that God would show up at that point. He thought that he was almighty, he was big, he was great, and no one could stop him. But God didn't have to show up in his full majesty. All God had to do was to, to allow just a part of a man's hand mm, to write on the wall. And I believe that God was specific because God ensured that the writing was somewhere that all of them could see. Where was the hand, where the hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand in the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Notable area. And what did he write? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, you thought that you are God, but I'm here to let you know that there is only one God, and he's a true and living God. Your Chaldeans, your soothsayers, your great men of Babylon cannot unravel this that I'm going to write on the wall. I want you to know that in the same hour that you would have seen the handwriting on the wall, it's time for your end. Wow. Imagine God show up and tell you this is your last moment. What would you do? Talk to me. What would you do? God show up and tell you this is your last hour to live. What would you do? <laughs> but Valentine, what would you do? Well, you would say this is it. <laughs> the truth is, we would be so frightened that we would spend the entire hour worrying. What is going to happen at the end of the hour? The Bible said that when the king saw the big and mighty king now, when he saw the handwriting, half of a man's handwriting. No, come on, Bridget. You are inside here one night. And when you look over right underneath that sign that says, reverence my sanctuary, you should see half of a man's hand up there writing. What would you do? Wow. You know, some people would, wouldn't even take the steps down. You know, in 2008, I must share this with you. In 2008, there was a demon possession at a school. Three consecutive days. 
the demons gave us hell at the school. But what struck me the most in that, on the Sabbath, we went to a church nearby, a Seventh-day Adventist church. And when we got to the church, service was in full swing, and the demon struck. And when the demon struck at the church, the members who should be praying took their stuff and as uh, some people would say they put their foot in their hand and they dashed through the door and while the members were running out of the church the unsaved were running inside the church that really struck me that sometimes we are here and the simplest of things can drive us so far from god that when we should stand on the promises of God, we are running for fear of our lives. The Bible said that when the king saw the handwriting, in verse 6, then the king's countenance changed. Mm. When God showed up in the city, when the unexpected visitor showed up in the city, changes must take place. Uh, the king recognized that it was not about him now. The king recognized that there was nothing he could do now because the hand writing on the wall was no ordinary hand. And the king recognized that he could not understand what was written on the wall. Not only that his countenance changed, the Bible said his thoughts troubled him. He was worried. What shall I do? What? can I do? What have I done for this to happen? Have you ever been in a situation and you're you are experiencing the pangs of hell and you wonder what crime have you committed? What sin have you committed? What wrongs have you done for this to be happening? The thoughts of the king was troubled so that the joints of his hips were loosened. Can you imagine? The man who could walk was now paralyzed because his hip was now out of joint. Can you imagine the haste that he got up in? That even his hip was dislocated. And his knees knocked against each other. Wow. I'm wondering if you are picturing the man, the mighty man. Now he got up, Brother Valentine. His hip was dislocated. His knees were knocking because they started to give way. I believe that he had loose bowels too. And his entire system collapsed. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. King spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever, whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck. And he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Sometimes you are going through your difficult moments. And it seems as though all... Is against you. The world is against you. The world is on your shoulder. Friends are gone. Family members are gone. Everybody is gone. You are left alone. And it seems as though your system is now about to give way. Because the problems you are facing, they are more than you can bear. But when God shows up, things must change. It cannot remain the same. You cannot remain in the same darkness. Light will take over. And darkness will be gone. Problems will be solved. Burdens will be lifted. And God himself will deliver you. The Sue says, as I bring this message to a close, didn't understand the writing. The Chaldeans didn't understand the writing. 
this was not a writing that they could understand. Why? Because this was a writing from heaven. Only those who are connected to Christ could understand it. You know, there are some things that the ordinary person out there, Brother Valentine, cannot understand. Only those who are connected to Christ can understand it. Why? Because Christ is revealing it to those who are connected to him. He wants us who are connected to him to share it with those who don't understand. So the Chaldeans couldn't understand. The Soothsayers couldn't understand. None of the wise men in Babylon, as they considered them, could understand the writing. But there was one in Babylon who was well connected to heaven. When you are connected to heaven, regardless of what man tried to do to you, God will stand by you and lift you up and exalt you and enlarge your territory because he's going to use you to do a great work in the midst of chaos. You know, sometimes you wonder. Some people ever come to you and ask you, how oh, you're so happy. Anybody can testify? You are suffering or you go through a rough patch. And somebody asks you, oh, you're so happy. You know why you're so happy? Because God is fighting your battle. Hello? You left everything at the foot of the cross and Jesus is dealing with that. So you have no time to worry about what the enemy is doing. Because guess what? The enemy is already defeated. So no need to worry about him. As the writing was placed on the wall, God allowed Daniel, his true servant, to interpret it to the king. Meany, meany, to kill you for sin. You have been found wanting. You are way in the balance. Your days are numbered and your time is at hand. That was the writing, you know. The unexpected visitor came with a warning at the great feast of Belshazzar. Your days are numbered. I have already finished your kingdom. I have, I have already appointed you to take it from you. It is said that the very night Babylon was seized. Because while they were in their drunken state, the Medes and the Persians came into the riverbed, emptied, dried the riverbed, channeled the water elsewhere, and walked in the riverbed and went right into Babylon and destroyed the Babylonians. You see, when God shows up, God is making no mistake when he shows up. And if your battle is hot, don't worry. God will show up. Your burdens are heavy, God will show up. It seems as though you can't go on, God will show up. It seems as though the entire world is against you, God will show up. He is our unexpected visitor because sometimes some things we are going through and we wonder how we are going to escape. And it was at the nook of time, as people would say, that God steps in and delivers again. What a God. So tonight, as you think about the unexpected visitor, who is your un unexpected visitor? Is it God? Or is it the enemy? I want to let you know that he comes in too. Hello? And when he comes, the Bible said he comes to do what? To kill and to destroy. But while he comes and you didn't expect him to come. And by the way, every Christian should expect that fellow. Because... <laughs> A thief will not break into an empty shop. Hello? A thief will not break into an empty shop. 
Something must be in the shop for him to take. Likewise, Satan will not attack you if there is nothing in you. Hello? Mercy now. He's going to attack you because something is in you. And that which is in you, he wants to get rid of. So when he shows up, I want you to know that God also shows up. Mm. There's a battlefield. And when God shows up, he shows up as the undisputed, undefeated champion of the world. And when you leave your case to him, give your battles to him, you can guarantee that victory is yours. I don't know what oh, Brother Valentine planned the latter part of the service, but it's, it's, it's all about prayer. And so I'm going to invite you to stand. And we're going to have a special prayer. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. As we talk with the Lord. Gracious Lord. We recognize that the world in which we are living. It's a mad place. Everything is going in the opposite direction as the enemy is turning the world around. We recognize, Lord, as children of light, if we are not careful, we might even run away from the light because of what's happening around us. We recognize, Lord, that the burdens are heavy, the problems are many trials on every side and perplexities behind we recognize lord that without you we will not make it the enemy is seeking means and ways to destroy us every chance he gets he shows up because his mission is to destroy your people every chance he gets lord he shows up because he wants to confuse somebody. Every chance he gets, he shows up. Because he wants to take away the truth from somebody. But great God, I ask that you, the undisputed, undefeated champion of the world, to take full control of your people in exchange. Oh God, we all know that without you it's impossible for us to make it in life eternal so we depend on you tonight oh god to transform us we depend on you, oh god to take us into your pavilion we depend on you tonight lord to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us we depend on you tonight lord to be with the youths of Exchange Church. Father, the world is filled with so many glitters. And oftentimes, oh God, it seems as though outside your church is better than within your church. It is true, oh God, that sometimes the youths and adults alike find more comfort and refuge outside the church because some of us, we are so unkind we have no peace and no love but great god help us tonight to demonstrate your love so that when you show up oh god we can welcome you and said this is our god we have waited for help us oh god that when the enemy shows up we can we can declare and say jesus answer that call because we would have been so wrapped up and tied up and tangled up with you that we depend on you to fight our battles for us. A special way, oh God, somebody might just be wondering what next. Because life is so challenging. Because things are so difficult. But great God, even now, I ask that you will whisper a word of comfort to such an individual. Somebody online might just be planning to give up. But oh God, speak your words of comfort to that individual tonight. 
I pray, great God, that you will continue to be with the leadership of this church, the membership of this church. Be with the communities and, oh God, beat back the forces of evil and establish a standard that your people will live according to your will and your purpose that when you shall come, we all will hear from your lips. Well done, though good and faithful servant. Have your own way in our lives and help us, oh God, to show others who you are, that they will come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. Until that day comes, Lord, when you shall come to claim the redeemed, keep us faithful and keep us true. This is my own asking with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wonderful message, my brothers and sisters. What do you say? Praise be to God. We'd like to thank Pastor Shakes for those wonderful words. Yes, it's the truth. We have proven it in the Bible. To close off, we'll have we'll sing hymn three zero eight. Holy thine. That's three zero eight. Please stand. Lord Jesus, thank you for tonight's wonderful message. I'm asking you please to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to live only for you. Because without you, we are nothing. And if we don't act according to your word, you will appear to us which if we don't make that change it will be hell and dear Lord we wouldn't want that 
please remember our youths. Help us to live only for you, those who are outside. I'm asking you, please, to help them acknowledge you and come inside before it's eternally too late. Please take us home safe because the devil is at us. He knows you are working in our lives. But dear Lord, help us to fear only you. This and other mercies I ask while I tell you thanks to Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we'd like to thank each and every one who were here tonight. It wouldn't have been blessed without, let me say, with empty benches. Now, those online, it wouldn't have been the same without you being online. And those who will join later, hope you enjoy. Have a blessed, have a, have a blessed night. And remember, tomorrow, the sixth night. Good night. <laughs>